Hey guys, this is Chris from DSX Mac, and I, I've actually tried to do this video a couple times, and each time I go off the deep end talking way too long, and I, I promise myself to keep these in and around under 10 minutes. Uh, so this is a talking about AI, and I wanted to ask a simple question, uh, and that is, what constitutes an AI image? Uh, and this is related to anything that's generative for me, um, I have employed generative systems in my writing and people will go, well, that crosses an ethical boundary. I go, well, first of all, let's explain what that is because people don't realize that Grammarly, which is, an AI, which is a grammar program that a lot of people pay for, uh, is an AI system. And people will, will argue and saying, I am deflating the issue because that doesn't count. I go, well, why does why does that not count? Like, why do we separate that AI system from another system? And they say, because you're not putting in a prompt to create a massive body of text and then using that to pass off as your own. That's a very good point. But it doesn't change the fact that we have had a history of outrage as we implement digital technology, from MIDI sampling to the use of Photoshop to word processing. And yeah, word process, just using a word processor was considered taboo. Uh, there were several authors that really hated the idea of a word processor. Harlan Ellison ha has a quote about hating word processors, and he used typewriters for the majority of his career. And we see it with Photoshop. So we are dealing with this next system, this next technological system. But it's a big one because it can generate whole images, whole cloth. And I absolutely agree that punching in a prompt, getting in a body of text, uh, or an image, and then passing that off as your own without something original coming out of it is is morally uh, bankrupt. But the question I always ask is, at what point does that line get a little fuzzy? Is there a line? Is it black and white? And I don't think it's black and white. So the question is, um, where does where where do we define that image as saying this is a generative system and therefore it it is worthy of outrage? Uh, and before people start saying that any aspect of it, let me bring up some examples. We talked about ChatGPT. What if you use ChatGPT to just generate names? Now, gener uh, generating town names, character names has been on the internet a decade before the advent of AI. Uh, there has been a, a fantasy name generator website that has been used probably by millions of people for probably 20 years. I don't know how long the site's been up. It's been up for a long, cause, long time because I think I used it back in the, in the aughts. And that's been around for a long time. So using ChatGPT to generate ideas and names. Um, uh, for example, I have a story, uh, a novel that I'm writing. And uh, through ChatGPT, I got the name of this novel. But it wasn't give me a name of a novel and it fired off one and I used it. It was using ChatGPT the way you would use a friend that you're bouncing ideas off of. And sometimes you need that voice and go, what do you think of this? Give me a bunch of ideas. Nope, this is not what I'm looking for. And then you do it for an hour until you fire off one and go, okay, this worked. And it's something that is not generated whole cloth from the AI. It was a conversation to try to figure out something that fit, that had the symbolism, the metaphor, the allegory that I wanted to work with. And that I felt I had no problems. Uh, my my conscience was clear. It was clear uh, when using it in that fashion. There are a couple questions to ask about: At what point does it cross an ethical boundary? And like I said, I have asked people in the industry where that line is, and some people will say it's all the way to this. The moment you use any form of generative system you've crossed that ethical line no matter to what extent uh, some people will say well no that that's ignorant it's it's there's a line over here and when I ask them I'm they're surprised when I tell them that there is a debate on where that that line is and for people who are wondering why there is a debate consider these questions in Photoshop there is a function that allows you to zoom out and it extrapolates your image and fills in the rest. Now, using math, uh, that image, that expanded image, is 20 or 30 percent now generative. The original image is, I'm going to assume that you're, create, you're an artist, you've created this image. At this point, 
you can say that 20% of this image is generative, except the fact that it's the core crux of, of, of the idea, the image itself is yours. Maybe you made an image of a, of a room and you go, you know, the characters are too close. I'm just gonna zoom it out an inch, pull it back a few feet from the perspective. Um, you know, does that, does that cross that ethical line? And I think a lot of people will say, well, of course not. That that's, you're, you're still an artist who's created the image. You're simply just, you've used an AI just to zoom out a little bit. Uh, and that doesn't seem to have an issue. And I wouldn't necessarily have an issue with it as well. So here's something interesting. When I was, um, when I was younger and I was writing Amethyst, Amethyst was uh, inspired by pre-existing artwork. And when uh, I push, posted Amethyst as an online game, not an online game, but as an RPG online you can download, I asked permission of these artists to use their artwork, and all of them, except for one, uh, said yes. And with, many, with obviously many of them being uh, happy to have been asked. And when Amethyst went professional, I approached many of these same artists, and a few of them came on board. One of them, Nick Greenwood, has been the predominant voice of Amethyst ever since. And uh, so the idea of, of, of taking inspiration from pre-existing artwork has always been something that uh, has been part of my, my creative process. And so playing around with uh, generative systems, um, it was one way of creating just visual ideas. And then using that as a way of communicating some of these ideas to Nick instead of using somebody else's art, something that was generated, and then having him take that as inspiration and moving on. The question asks, uh, is and then asked, is that crossing an ethical line um, using AI in the process of communication? And you'd be surprised. Some people will say yes. Uh, I think a lot of people will say, will, will no. When it comes down to it, most people will say that the ethical boundary comes in is when you employ a generative systems to supplant the creative process, basically as a way of saving money and preventing uh, the, uh, the, the hiring of creative artists. And I think everyone will be will agree with that, and I would agree with that as well. But a lot of people don't like the idea of artists themselves employing generative systems within their arsenal. And I would say I would agree if they're definitely artists that could not create that quality on their own. And I think that's terribly, I think that's pivotally important, which is going to be such a hard thing for new artists to break out into the field because now they have to effectively prove that their illustrations came out of their own creativity and skill rather than something that was entirely generated by AI because we're going to see a massive upswell of artists that are going to pass off AI as their own. We're seeing it now. Um, and it's going to be difficult for reputable artists to get noticed. And I make a point. I've been working with the same artist for a very, very long time. There's one artist I talk about often, Nick, that I've been working with since 2007. Wow, it's been 15 years, Whew, more than 15 years. And so when he creates an image, I, I've never really asked about his process. I've never asked about the, I, I know he has a Wacom tablet. I know he uses Photoshop, but I know he has, he, he sketches things out in paper before he scans them in. So I have told him and we, uh, and I've told other artists that you know, you've proven your quality, you've proven your end result. I don't really care about how the sausage is made. As long as the end result matches that, uh, and you're, it's something that you're willing to put your, your signature to, um, I'm, I'm more than happy to accept that. My budgets don't change. And that's kind of the important thing. Uh, we still hire artists. We still, you know, in fact, the biggest issue has never been running out of money for our art budget. Uh, Amethyst Revelations has the highest budget for any book we've ever had for art. Uh, the economy has changed, so this is not the same, you know, same money from 10 years ago. It's not the same money as now. But we've, um, uh, we have have nearly a $10,000 art budget for Revelations. But our biggest problem, which we've encountered with both Ultramodern and Affinity, Affinity hasn't been um, a, a losing of money, but a losing of time. We generally just don't have time to create all the images in fact right now amethyst revelations is almost two months behind schedule and that's entirely because of um, waiting for artwork and i don't really mind waiting because i like quality and nick and i have had this conversation about whether or not us using um, ai within our process has sped this process to create more illustrations and therefore be able to spend this money to create more artwork uh, and he has said yes that that, that having that, that the use of ai within our process has um has sped along the process of creating more artwork and so it ultimately ends up creating um a faster machine and so a lot of people are using that using ai to speed up a system rather than some plant artists 
is that, does that cross an ethical line? Does that cross an ethical boundary? Using, uh, an using AI as a way of speeding up communication of conveying ideas so there's less rejections of, of sketches. So you can just get right to a point and not worry about it. How, how much you work on an image does it become original? If you take a JI AI image and then you recreate that using your own skill to create something original, even though your inspiration was taking off of something that was AI generative, does that cross that ethical line? And this may come as a shock, but a lot of people are not in agreement to this. And what bothers me the most is when I attempt to ask people about these, I ask them, and someone says, we're not allowing AI artwork. I ask a question like, okay, what does that mean? And a lot of them don't have an answer because they, they're, they're doing a knee-jerk reaction without really looking into this. When someone says, we don't believe in generative systems. Okay, cool. First of all, you must believe that they exist because they're out there. But what does that mean? If, if, you, are, you, know, if you convey an, an AI image to an artist and going, this is an idea we had, take that inspiration and go off with it and do something else. How is, like, isn't that using AI as part of the process? And people will say, no, it comes down to a single black and white point. If you punch in something and you create it and you pass that off as somebody's artwork or you use that as supplement an artist, that crosses an ethical line. And I agree, but you'd be surprised the number of people who object to the massive breadth, this massive spectrum of percentages as well. Well, some of you people will say that it is zero, that the moment you employ generative systems in any capacity, you are now part of the problem. Because I will tell you now that if people, uh, that, that if a company says that we do not employ an AI in any capacity, I will come out and say that they are most likely lying. They have used a generative system as a communication tool. They've used an AI system to augment a work, to fix a work, to provide inspiration. They've used ChatGPT to generate ideas, if not writing. They have used other AI systems to smooth to streamline their process. Um, like I said, I think everybody out there now is employing AI in some capacity without truly knowing that they are doing it um, because we're seeing they were seeing the outrage and the outrage is very specific we go after very these very specific uh, incidents anyway I'm gonna have to edit this video down because I swear it, I'll get it down to 10 minutes uh, thank you and like I said this is the question I'm open for answers I am NOT looking for ad hominem attacks because uh, unfortunately it has happened on numerous occasions whenever I bring up this conversation it turns into attacking the person asking the question rather than addressing the issue. But this is the question I'm, I'm throwing out to people. Where would you draw the line? Um, and is it wrong to believe that this subject is gray and not black or white? Uh, anyway, that's me. Uh, this has been Chris from DSX Machina.